Ooh, what up, chaps? I'm Magical Mike, and I'd like to ask and answer a few questions about the Revenant Elite Specialization at the Vindicator. Hopefully I can explain quickly what it does, how it does that thing, and most importantly, how it feels and if it's fun to play. And if you like the video, then do please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks. First up, let's see what Anet thinks the Vindicator is all about, and then I'll take it through some Dragon Response missions, strikes, and some tougher open world mobs. The Kurzix and Luxons were bitter enemies, but their greatest champions, Saint Victor and Archimoris, united to help slay Shiro the Betrayer at the cost of their own lives. Vindicators call upon the strength of their legendary alliance, channeling both heroes' skills to devastate their enemies and protect their allies. They use great swords to deliver massive attacks and crush foes by leaping straight into battle instead of dodging. I think that teaser video pretty much nails it. Vindicators get the great sword, an altered dodge mechanic, and the alliance stance that grants them access to 10 new skills themed around the old Kurzik and Luxon heroes, Saint Victor and Archimorus. These skills do indeed focus on protecting and buffing allies, or increasing your damage potential. The Vindicator is an interesting elite spec, but it does suffer from a fairly common problem that the Ender Dragon set seems to have, its lack of raison d'etre. It's almost a hybrid spec by design, wanting to both be aggressive and defensive, ebbing and flowing as the battle progresses, and as your skill access changes. To me, it felt almost like a generalist style of play, not particularly good at any one job that, say, the Herald or the Renegade could do, but not awful at the things it does offer either. The Greatsword is certainly the best part of the kit for me. If you've played Ranger with a Greatsword, then you might recognise a similar feel to some of these skills. Skill 2 feels a lot like Ranger's Maul, big damage fairly often and in a wider cone, but also sometimes just felt a little bit floaty. Skill 3 feels similar to Swoop, but with a Revenant twist, adding some misty effects to the rush and ending with a fairly strong, sweeping, wide chill attack too. So it's a good gap closer, and a good gap creator. Skill 4 is a decent block that swaps over to a counter attack, again similar to Ranger's Greatsword. This one can eat up to 5 attacks to return more damage based on how many it eats, incentivizing getting a really meaty block and then unleashing a fatter counter attack which in the end felt a little bit lacklustre to me most of the time, but numbers can be tuned. And finally we have skill 5, Eternity's Requiem, that blasts a load of mini rift-like meteors on the ground for a huge amount of AoE damage and vulnerability. This and skill 2 are your massive payoff abilities, and have wide attack ranges attached, meaning the Greatsword is certainly meant for large AoE cleave situations. You'll also find a lot of chill and vulnerability attached to these skills, but no crowd control so beware of that. Personally, I still prefer the speed of a dual sword revenant attacks, but Greatsword is a pretty fun complement to that set, though it's quite tough to drop the staff weapon swap because of its huge utility potential and mega CC. If you choose to run the Battle Scars trait though, you'll see some massive self-healing potential with the Greatsword, giving it some real staying power, especially in a larger fight. Alliance Stance is your new legend, while you have Alliance Stance in one of your slots, the skills it offers are dual purpose. In other words, you have 10 new skills that occupy 5 of your utility slots, and when you choose to use one of them, it flips over to its partner and then goes on cooldown. The Kurzik skills are defensive and offer group support, while the Luxon skills are offensive and either give you some more damage or some boons to help you do damage like Quickness, Stability or Fury. For what it's worth, I quite liked how strong the Luxon skills felt in enemy groups, but giving more benefits for hitting more targets, but the Kurzik alternatives felt much more situational. There's not a lot of situations where you'll need a massive condition cleanse, or an allied stun break that people will actually appreciate or notice, but those times can happen, and you'll enjoy having that in the kit when it does. The big issue though is the Elite, the Urn of Saint Victor. This is a channeled skill that hurts you while it's active, nerfs your damage, denies all incoming healing, and eventually heals allies and grants boon if you drop it below a certain health threshold. Frankly, the only time I use this with either by mistake, or to immediately drop it to get access to the Luxon Spear. I also managed to get myself downed by it because of reasons. It could be decent on a support or a Vindicator healing build, but I felt like it was just really awkward to use most of the time. It's like they've adapted the flavour of the old Guild Wars 1 version, but without making it actually useful. 
The looks and skills were okay though. You get a leaping gauge, a quickness generator, and a stun break that grants fury and stability. All of these scale based on the number of enemies hit, which leans into big crowds again. The Elite is an intercontinental ballistic missile with a massive 2k range on it, that eventually hits like a wet paper towel. A bit sad really, but I still found it fun to use, regardless. When you use any one of these skills, it goes on to cooldown and flips to the other version, which is still on cooldown. I feel like this really hurts the availability of these skills, and the idea of chaining them together smoothly doesn't quite work out like I wanted it to. If you wanted to engage with Nomad's advance and then immediately battle dance back out, well you can't do that, you gotta wait for the cooldown. The Alliance stance skills are hard tied together like this, and I'm not sure that it's a really good thematic sacrifice for the Vindicator's general combat flow. It also feels like this stance isn't quite as useful at any one job than the other choices that you have, so we'll see how it develops. You also get access to an F2 skill as a Vindicator. By default, all this does is grant you 50 endurance at a moderate energy cost and cooldown, which isn't super impressive, but if you're in Alliance stance, it also flips all of the skills over at once, which means if you do really want to focus on being a supportive Kurzik, you can force the availability of those skills more often with the F2, and vice versa with the looks inside. It doesn't refresh the cooldowns though, unless you trait it to do so, but that also doubles the cooldown of your F2 to 40 seconds, which is pretty punishing if you just want to focus on the one stance. The Vindicator also gets an entirely altered dodge mechanic. You'll only get access to one dodge instead of two. It has three different versions, and each one takes a different amount of endurance to use, which means it'll take a different amount of time to charge them up. The big DPS one takes the most endurance, and you'll feel it taking a while to charge up unless you focus on buffing your vigor effectiveness and uptime through, say, retribution traits or sigils of stamina or energy, or taking Shiro to use reposting shadows. Each one of the dodges flies you up into the air like a superhero, allows you to move freely during the evade frames, and does something on impact. Unfortunately, the impact does have a short aftercast, which makes you vulnerable after landing for half a second or so, and locks you in place. So do be careful, even though you're meant to be using it to dive into danger. So the big DPS one lasts the longest, takes the longest to charge up, but in return does the most damage on impact, and grants a 15% damage buff for a short while. In a group setting, it's not too bad to maintain this. It does feel like an absolute eternity to wait while you're in the sky though, meaning you can take a drink or whatever, and it barely makes up for the loss in DPS that you'd have with the 15% damage buff. Another choice is the boon extension trait that felt the most natural pick to me, and a much shorter hop version that adds a healing buff and grants barriers when you land too, which I felt was extremely spammable. I did find, as a bit of a quirk, that the Jalus rotating hammer skill do continue to do damage while you're dodging though, well, in other words, while you're in the air, which was interesting, I suppose. So of the Grand Master traits, I did prefer the middle average one just for the boon extension aspect of it. However, the chill on foes and the protection and might on allies felt like it was extremely valuable too, since I was starving for a number of boons without access to Herald or Renegade abilities. I didn't particularly enjoy the Forerunner of Death mega dodge, because I felt vulnerable any time I was waiting for it to charge up, and for that split second on landing, but the Saint of Zuhelza version, with its easy access and valuable healing modifiers as well as a barrier, almost makes up for only having the one dodge, since you can have access to it quite so often. This thing is very strong, and can be applied to a decent, albeit gimmicky, dodge spamming healer build. I wasn't a fan of trading the F2 to remove the Alliance stance cooldowns, but I can see that being useful for multiple panic button access, probably on a healing build again. And as for the master traits, they all revolve around improving your endurance somehow. Frankly, the best choice for overall well-roundedness was Song of Arborium, which improves your vigor effectiveness by 50%, and grants it to you on dodges too, which means you'll always have access to it, and it's very helpful. So what sort of builds did I come up with then? As I mentioned it a few times, I think the most effective thing I found was in fact a healer, focusing on spamming dodges for that barrier and various boons from the Alliance stance, particularly the Kurzik side, while also having access to Salvation traits and Ventari skills for a little alacrity and some mass heals and utility. I've seen a few variations on this, some taking Retribution, some Devastation and some Invocation traits like myself. 
Mostly I just enjoy using the huge energy gain from charged mists, but overall this straight line is quite flexible as a choice. Most of the efficacy comes from Salvation and Vindicator anyway, so go nuts. Since you can still use tablet abilities while you're in the air doing your dodges, you can essentially just spam dodge and heal things with the extra barrier safety on top. While it doesn't offer a lot of the benefits of a heal renegade or a boon lord herald, if you do just want raw healing then it's not a terrible pick. As for a DPS build, I opted to take similar Vindicator traits anyway. The huge dodge is a little tough for me to use, and I really appreciated the extra fury, quickness and might duration from Spirit Boon, Song of the Mists, and swapping to Shiro while dodging for the Boon extension. Battle Scars is also massive value with the Greatsword, since you pump out tons of vulnerability to then leech health with. And while I did also opt to go with the Alliance Stance on this build too, I could easily justify swapping out for Jalus for some alternative skills. Overall, I think the Greatsword and the Alliance skills flourish much better in an AoE setting. During DRMs and while fighting their messier groups of Jin, Hydras, Dustmites, Sandlines and Forged, I found both doing an absolute ton of work to delete things, as soon as I could stabilise the fight for long enough to actually focus on something. Against single targets, I reckon double swords are probably just a bit better, but neither weapon set has any hard crowd control, which hurt me against the Jin and during DRM bosses that had break bars, forcing me pretty much to keep my staff in my weapon swap. In strike missions, I felt like I was hitting like a wet noodle compared to something like a Boon Herald, but upon looking at my footage, realised that the Greatsword can pump out some big hits, it just didn't really feel like it at the time. I also felt like I was lacking some group support and some more useful abilities like an Alacrity Renegade would have. While attempting to do DPS, I felt much less effective than those specs, but running the healer variant during the Bone Skinner and the Whisper of Jormag was much more rewarding, since the barrier and the utility was much higher in a group setting like that. Try and keep an eye on me being able to heal the group with dodges, spot heal with the Ventari tablet on stragglers, and delete mechanics with the bubble too, all at the same time. I did try to use the Urn Elite once or twice, but felt like it was entirely useless, and I have no idea what the point of it is in the first place. Maybe if it applied barrier for how much damage you took while it's active, or some beefier boons, or didn't just deny all incoming heals so you could try and upkeep it more often, I'm not sure. I can also imagine the Kurzik skills in particular being much more effective in PvP, but I didn't try them out there. I also think that energy sigils are going to have some huge value on this spec, or even stamina sigils for open world or some worldly world play. Once again, this is another spec that's suffering from a minor identity crisis, with the Alliance Stand skills being tied together but also having shared cooldowns on all of the flip skills, it suffers from a lack of access, while also forcing you to adapt and change your approach to every situation on the fly since you'll have different skill combinations active every time you go into combat, unless you want to manage them out of combat, which is probably fairly tedious. If I did have a suggestion, it would be to separate Saint Victor and Archimorus into their own stances, or perhaps nerf the endurance gain on F2 while allowing it to give you better access to the skills that you want to use more often. But overall it's quite a tough call because the whole point and theme of these guys is that they work together and all the cooldowns are conveniently 10 seconds, which is just enough time to swap legends, get a bunch of value in on your extra swap, and then swap back and have all of your flipped skills available on the return. So the Vindicator. This is a spec designed to jump into massive groups of enemies and do some serious AoE damage with its greatsword, get a ton of boons from its looks and engage skills, and then, in a pinch, back out with its Kurzik set, resustain itself, and go again. The more it takes on, the better this spec does. So in conclusion, grab yourself a greatsword and start running battle scars for a jolly good time.